Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here, and welcome back for the last time to Board Game Blender. As you may or may not know, we're going to be uh, wrapping up Board Game Blender here in this episode and transitioning over and incorporating uh, into Board Game Breakfast, which is going to be happening twice a week, once live, once pre-recorded. So uh, even though we are technically finalizing here Board Game Blender, I, I, I see it more as a, a transition. I've been wanting to take over Board Game Breakfast for a while now, don't tell Tom. So uh, this is just me uh, furthering my plans. So uh, anyway, today we're going to be talking about, uh, on the last episode, we talked about uh, 2018. Before that, we took a retrospective look to the year before. And so we're going to wrap up with a look ahead at 2019. So, um, you know, just seeing what's on the horizon, what trends seem to be here games are specifically looking forward to or maybe just concepts and, and hopes and dreams we have for the future of gaming. So once again, thanks for tuning in and checking this out. Let's kick it off. Hello friends of the blend and welcome back to Retro Board Game Corner. Today we're looking ahead to 2019. As you may all have heard, this is the last episode of Board Game Blender. But don't you worry, we are going to be rolling over into Board Game Breakfast, and I will be continuing to showcase my massive retro board game collection just for you. Now here is just a small sample of what I will be showcasing in the future. I want to thank everyone that's watched Board Game Blender and hopefully that you'll follow all of us over on Board Game Breakfast. And Blender will always be friends of the blend. May your rolls be high. Pickering over board games where we talk about topics, trends, and things in board gaming and how we feel about them. So the topic for the blunder this week is looking forward to 2019 and the trend that we wanted to talk about was... That we're out of trends and for some of you you may have said that that happened a long time ago. I don't know about a long time ago. I mean we've... Did we ever have... No, I'm There's kidding. been some recurrent trends or themes that we've discussed. Yeah. Things, if you will. Uh, but no, we... We couldn't really come up with a trend this week. I mean, we do have some highlights, uh, or things that we're looking forward yes, to. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, board game related, I'm looking forward to hopefully making more time to sit down and play longer games. Um, mm -hmm. We still have only played the short version of Dino Island, which my strategies don't really seem to shine in that amount of time. So mm -hmm. I'm just looking forward to setting more time aside for like starting mm -hmm. a game at 4 in the afternoon instead of sometimes where it's we're working all day or we're doing other things and then it's eight o'clock and we're trying to cram a game in and yeah and then in that and you're reaching out to our community more that we have here in utah and prioritizing spending time with them and playing games with them yeah i would say i mean that's how we got into board gaming was with the big games right mm -hmm. and we've moved more towards shorter experiences i think for a couple of reasons one because in an effort to sort of play all the games uh it's easier to accommodate shorter games in that mm -hmm. um rather than 
looking for that one big game. Two, we want to expand the hobby to our friends and family, and so mm -hmm. that's sort of favored more casual games. And three, I think we've just been really busy in the past couple of years. With that in mind, moving into 2019 and with the changes that are going on with Dice Tower, um, it just kind of seemed like a nice time for us to bid you all adieu. Uh, thank you so much for watching us, for following our channel. Hopefully we'll be able to start putting more reviews back up. So, yeah, so last week in the Blender, or two weeks ago, we talked about uh, the fact that being a part of the Blender was just a huge highlight for us mm -hmm. in 2018. Yeah. And there are some changes coming to the format of Dice Tower, but this is also just because uh, we are so busy and we want to focus on our own uh, content going mm -hmm. forward. So if we are contributing, check out our YouTube channel where we're going to be hopefully posting more reviews again. And we're even thinking about doing a podcast of bickering over board games. Yeah. If you just can't get enough of us. Someone has to finish their dissertation though. So, so, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> so this is going to be our last blender. Yeah. And uh, we have enjoyed every minute of it. And I don't want to say I'm looking forward to not doing it because no. I really did love every episode. It was a great opportunity and yeah I'm so thankful that we could be part of this family and this community if even just for a short period of time. So Yeah I mean Dice Tower has been a huge part of my introduction to board gaming. It's a, been a huge resource for me and if you told me in 20 I don't even know what year but when we were living in Moscow. That, 2010? Um, no I don't know. That <laughs> Years ago. <laughs> if you had told me that one day I would be in a Dice Tower video even for four minutes just rambling about my thoughts I would have been like no way. Like, I would have been like no, rambling about your thoughts that sounds about right. So, so um, yeah so 2019 uh, we're gonna hopefully you know we're looking forward to producing more of our own content again if we can finally get out from uh, underneath all this work and I can get ahead on my dissertation one more year uh, yeah, and then also uh, Kaylee just graduated so we're not sure where that puts us in the next yeah we might be living apart and it just gets but tricky. you don't know you don't care about any of those yeah, things. yeah so we're gonna keep playing board games we hope you keep playing board games and uh, remember to stay a friend of the blend yeah and if you're ever in Utah yes yeah. shoot shoot us a line we can play some games cheers For Under the Radar, I'm not going to be focusing on any one game in specific, seeing as to how none of them are out yet, so they can't quite fly under the radar just yet. Instead, I'm going to be listing a few things that I want to see more of in this upcoming year, and some things that I, I'm okay to see uh, less of, you know, some things I'm kind of done with. Again, this is a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek list, but... Uh, Let's go ahead and dive in. I want to start with the, the slight negatives, all right? So things I would be all right to see less of. And I'm going to kick it off with lingo in games, okay? I'm talking here specifically about games that use a lot of words, it would seem, to push their possible crowd of gamers out. And I don't like that, you know? Especially when we now have the ability to replace a lot of this jargon with symbology on the cards. And I love seeing that. I love seeing a game in which when a monster hits you for two health, it shows me a two, and then whatever their graphic design is for a little heart or something like that. That's fantastic. You're saving space on the card and it's going to pop. It's gonna look good. You'll see that little red dot across the table. But instead you have games uh, that do, you know, that call the deck of cards something specific, or that still, you know, use the abbreviation uh, D, uh, what is it, DMG for damage. And I find those things are problematic to teach those games to folks that aren't familiar with these concepts, these abbreviations, where they came from, that sort of thing. I, I don't find it appealing myself personally. And they are simply a barrier to new players. So I want to see less of that jargon in games. More, more symbology that's used smartly. Another thing I want to see less of, deck building. I'm just kind of over deck building. Especially because it's a, it's a mechanism that in and of itself becomes a game. I 
I have not seen a lot of new ground broken in deck building games since the original one came out. You know, you are able to do things like stick bad cards in other people's decks, thin out your deck so you draw things faster, um, and a few other things. But they're all implied by the very mechanism. So there's not a lot of exploration there to be had. Now, there's a few games that have been able to take deck building and use it as part of something else. That I like all right, you know, but just yet another deck building game where you start with garbage and you build to something better in the same old way. The themes have gotten different. They've been sometimes better, sometimes not as good, but it's just a tired concept um, where the changes from one to the next to me seem very tiny. They're very small. So fewer deck building games and I'll be all right with that. And then lastly, I want to see less generic fantasy, especially comedy fantasy. You know the ones, these games that have a funny title, you know, it's some some fan fantasy name of some kingdom somewhere, and then you've got the funny little illustrations of the goblin and the knight and the elf and the this and the that, and it's just the same old thing. And you're probably thinking of a game, but... There's probably six others you've seen and can't remember, and the one you are thinking of, you'll probably forget really soon. Because these n games are forgettable. A, because the titles are probably forgettable, you know, if it's some made-up, crazy, funny-sounding word, it's supposed to be funny. Uh, these games often also fall trapped to this idea of the lingo, the usage of lingo, you know. But I just don't find them captivating. It's, um... And, and usually, you know, it's hard to do comedy in games, so these games are usually not very funny either. So I have a problem with those. Generic fantasy is, uh, for me, a tired concept anyway. But then you do this whole, we're generic fantasy, but funny. Look at, look at the nose on this elf. Haha. <laughs> and then it's, it's just not that fun. So those are my negatives. Let's talk about some positives. Things I want to see more of. I want to see more roll and write used as a mechanism in bigger games. So far, roll and write games have kind of gone the way of deck building games, in which there's a few of them. Most of them are, um, there's not a few, there's quite a, quite a lot of them. But the ones that are there, they've all kind of gone the same route. They are small games, they are short games, and you are doing just that thing. It's, you know, saying this is roll and write describes the entire game. I don't want a game that I can say that I can do that with, you know. Uh, I I want a roll and write game that for me to say, yeah, this is a roll and write game, and for you to go, cool. But that doesn't. Dis I don't. I can't picture that game yet. The whole thing yet. And that's kind of how deck building games are, you know. I say this is a deck building game. You've got like eighty percent of that picture in your head. So I want to see roll and write as a as a part of something bigger, something that has more going on. You know, where's my where's my worker placement roll and write? In which I, I roll and then I take a tile and I write something on it and that's my worker. You know, where's that game? Where is the game that incorporates roll and write as part of something else that's captivating and, and brings me into the world and it isn't just better Yahtzee, you know? So that I want to see. I want to see monster games that use literature other than H.P. Lovecraft slash Cthulhu. And now I understand that there is a lot of it out there, and but the problem is most of it is not, uh, you know, in the public domain, and Cthulhu is in the public domain. So if you want to make a Cthulhu game, you can. But there's so much fantastic literature out there, you know, that has these same overtones, the, the idea of, you know, terror and uh, powers unknown and, and beyond understanding, unfathomable things. And that can be either based on literature that exists or original literature. At the end of the day, I want to see more of these kinds of games because I do tend to like these, you know, monstrous things that use original settings and ideas. Basically the exact opposite of Generic fantasy, you know, uh, and I like like I said hor horrific settings in games. That's an interesting concept to me So more games of this type. I'm not getting sick of these games with a lot going on and the monsters and the things 
And I'm not even necessarily sick of Cthulhu. I really like that. But I do want to see original ones with this concept. And truly original. You know, games that I can say that. That's different from what I've seen before. Uh, something I want to see more of is a marriage between a captivating theme and solid, awesome mechanisms. We are still... And, and, and Kickstarter sort of feeds some of this. We are still at that point where if you are getting an awesome, thematic, fantastical game, and that's what the, the theme is, the rules might be a little dodgy. They might be a bit overwrought. There might be some sort of FAQ needed kind of content, you know? And I just want to see more of these games that have Something that is clean, that does not bring up timing issues, you know, those that kind of game. But that isn't, you know, a, a farming game based on, you know, in some place I, uh, I'll i never go to and uh, 600 years ago. And I'm not sure why, I, why there's that. It almost feels like people settle, you know, for one or the other. If you want this really cool epic setting... There might be some putting up with, with slightly rusty rules. If you want a robust game that's going to make you think and strategize and have, you know, have your brain really engaged, then you're going to have to farm, you know, cucumbers and pumpkins. And, I don't, you know, there's some that bridge that gap. Don't get me wrong. I want to see more of that. I want to see these, these games. You know, I just played a game, for example, that's a, a little roll and write game. Um, it's a very similar game to other games I've played, but you know what? The theme was different. It was about spray painting, tagging a city. You're a bunch of kids, you're going around spray painting the city. That's different. That's a new theme. It's a cool theme. The game looks cool. And the mechanisms are neat, you know? So, I like that sort of thing. And then finally, I want to see games from more places in the world published and produced at the quality of the ones we are used to now. And I know this might be a bit of a pipe dream, you know, if those places simply don't have access to that production pipeline. But again, this is what I'm hoping for. This is what I'd like to see in the future is, you know, games designed in places and from folks uh, that I've, I haven't seen games from there before, you know, that, that they haven't... Uh, quite reached out across the the masses and made an impact i want to see those games you know i want to see games from everywhere and see what kinds of ideas are going to spring forth from there because it can only be more interesting concept and access to more brains is going to lead to more original ideas so there you go that's what i'm thinking i'd like to see a little bit less of but mainly more of in 2019 i hope you're having a great year so far in 2019 Let's keep on rocking with the episode. Hey folks, welcome back to my adventures in and around Colorado. I'm Mark Street, and this is Ramblings. Today we're on the trail to Horsetooth Falls. It's pretty near Fort Collins, actually, where I live. And, you know, it's about a 30 minute drive to get here, if that. And the hike is only about three miles round trip. So the trail is kind of barren at first as you move up into the foothills, but it's gonna get a lot more interesting. So follow along. So I just got back from the Dice Tower cruise. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite gaming experiences was playing on a boat mansions on a boat so we played the new expansion for mansions of madness roy and i and ambi and uh that was a really cool experience the boat is sinking not only is the boat sinking but the boat was on fire as well and you got to get off and you have to rescue everybody and get to the lifeboat and the crazy bit was that this particular scenario has a traitor component oh my gosh it really threw everybody through for a loop because there's all kinds of misdirection and miss things going on that you aren't expecting. Like for me personally, I was trying to just simply fix a light and it went out and everybody thought for sure I turned the lights out trying to be the traitor. 
Horse Two Falls is a very well used trail, uh, especially during the summer. This is super busy, you know, it's super accessible, lots to see, lots to do. You actually get up into the foothills fairly quickly here, which is what makes this so popular. But during the winter, you know, there's a lot less people and uh, no snakes. And then Roy had this decision about where to send the crew. Oh my gosh. So we thought for sure Roy was the traitor. Uh, mud, stepping on mud. Oh my gosh, lots of mud. Yeah, it's that time of year. So Roy sends the crew off to go find more survivors, which you think is a pretty logical decision. However, we find the crew later and they're all slaughtered. Oh my gosh. So at that point, I thought for sure, Roy had to be the traitor, right? Well, who else could it be? That seems an obvious choice. So yeah, all kinds of misdirection and tomfoolery going on. So neither Roy or I were the traitors in this particular scenario, but Ambie, oh yeah, she was definitely the traitor. So why is it called Horse Tooth Falls? Well, there is a mountain here we call Horse Tooth and it's under, under kind of below the mountain and you can actually hike up to the horse tooth, which looks like a horse's buck tooth. It's actually a pretty cool hike. We're gonna do that one of these ramblings, so definitely stay tuned for that. So I guess what we've learned is that Ambi is the traitor and to not be trusted when you play games. And I don't wanna give away any spoilers about how that works, but there's all kinds of hidden information, things that nobody knows. So, I mean, it really does a lot of really good mis misleading. So that was truly an epic experience playing on the cruise, a boat on a boat, uh, and poor Roy and I, right? We were really the good guys. Here it is, Horse Tooth Falls, as promised. Now, during the summer, this is crazy with water, and even in the middle of winter, there's tons of ice, but we got a kind of a mild day today for the winter, and it's just kind of trickling down. So, questions of the week. Since I'm talking about Mansions of Madness, what is your favorite scenario for mansions? And what do you like to play on? What device? Do you like using your phone? Do you like tablet? Do you use your computer? Uh, let me know in the comments below. And just a quick note to say a big thanks to Z. You know, I've been doing Blender since the start and I haven't hit every episode, but I try as many as possible. Done some new segments. I love ramblings. It might be my favorite segment. So I hope to continue in some fashion. And uh, you know, it's onward and upward. Looking forward to what's new, gonna be new on the Dice Tower. So, but thank you Z. Thank you so much for letting me part of this. There's truly some just amazing views up here. And these are just the foothills. This is just a minor trail, really. Can't wait to take you on more in the future. All right, folks. You know, thank you so much for all the support through the years and look forward to what's up and coming next. So until next time, we'll see you at the table. Hey there, friends of the blend. This is Chris and Lindsay from Behind the Box, and today we want to talk to you about a couple of things that we are really excited for in board gaming for 2019. The first of which is a game that is coming out that we kickstarted back in 2017, I think. A while ago. <laughs> called Detective City of Angels. This game looks incredible. Now, if you've seen us on this uh, channel before, you'll have heard us talk about detective games and how much we love them. Yeah. This is another one of those, except for it has a really interesting twist. In the, the core game, the main game mode of it, one of you plays as almost like a GM for the mystery. And the other players are competing to solve the mystery first. There's really cool mechanics, like they can go to a location, and if they get there before anyone else, the GM character will give them some sort of information that then might not be available to the rest of the players if they are taking it away from the crime scene. So it's a really interesting game about trying to figure out what is going on and what the answers are with limited information. There's also uh, cooperative game modes, as well as I think a solo mode as well. It just sounds really, really cool and we should be getting that in the next few months, so we are very excited. That's yeah. top of our list. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. The other thing that we're very excited about is some changes to the Dice Tower. So we're going to be moving across to Board Game Breakfast and um, we couldn't be more thrilled. We're really excited to, to um, join those guys over there, so we... Uh, invite you to to, yeah. to join us over there as well yeah we'd also <laughs> like to thank z and the other contributors for letting us do board game blender and just for all the work that they all put into it it's been an incredible experience and we are really looking forward to 
experiencing more of that, just yeah. in a slightly different way. So, yeah. Thank you very much. The next time you see us, we'll be on Board Game Breakfast, so hopefully you will come along and join us there. Uh, if you want to see more of us in the meantime, then check us out at our own social media. But until later, we'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Hi everyone, my name is Chris and this is the Teacher's Lounge. And if you're like me, this is a little bit of a melancholy moment. This is uh, sweet and sour. Nope, that's not the phrase. Um, bittersweet, that's the one. Bittersweet, I'll keep that one in. So this is the last episode of Board Game Blender and I've been so happy to be a part of it for the last a little bit over a year. And I'm grateful for Z for letting me tag along and to share my little contributions. <sighs> with that change in mind, I'm going to continue to make the Teacher's Lounge with the new board game breakfast format, and I'm excited about that, as well as the other things I'm looking forward to about 2019. One of the things that I particularly want to focus on is to play the games that I already love. Some of the games I got to try recently, especially with the uh, Dice Tower Cruise, are 2019 releases that many people are excited about. Wingspan, excellent game, great a uh, lighter weight but uh, deep thinking engine building game. Smartphone Inc., a very cutthroat economic game that I got trashed in and yet I still enjoyed and I want to try again. And of course, Blackout Hong Kong by one of my favorite designers, Alexander Pfister. All these games are great and I'm looking so forward to what else is going to be around the corner in 2019. But one of the things that I want to focus on is playing the games that I already love, the ones in my collection and getting them to the table more often. I'm surrounded here by two of my favorite games. Just absolutely adore these ones, and I think I really should teach more people these games that I love. They're kind of um, as a sleeper hits from 2015, Mombasa and Broom Service by Alexander Pfister. Broom Service in particular, for me, is a little bit harder to get to the table because my wife does not like the game at all, and this is one of my favorite games of all time. Now, of course, I'm respectful enough that I won't force her to play a game that she doesn't like. And so my goal for 2019 is the same that I had for 2018, which is to get this game to the table three times in the year. And if I can do that, I can justify the fact of still owning this game. And if I don't get a table, if I don't get a game to the table often enough, I'll sell it off. We'll just remove it from our collection, uh, make a little bit of money, uh, from that sale to buy a new game to take that spot on the shelf and hopefully have a new game that we'll enjoy. Keep a fairly lean collection that way. So that's my hope, that's my goal. Get this to the table at least three times and move along some of the games that we just aren't going to play. There's no use in holding something on the shelf because I might play it in 20 years and I might love it then. That's my hope. So I hope that you are looking forward to a great 2019 and whatever your goals are, work towards them. I hope that they're achievable. I hope that you get to enjoy them and I hope that you will stick around for the new upcoming changes to Board Game Breakfast and everything and that you'll continue to watch me here at the Teacher's Lounge. As Z always says, stay a friend of the blend. Thank you. <laughs>And that's going to wrap up Board Game Blender, everybody. A big thanks to all of my contributors, as always. They've all been fantastic. And a big thanks to you for being friends of The Blend. If you enjoy our content and if you have the ability and have a moment, I'd like to invite you over to our Kickstarter page if you haven't checked it out yet. And again, if you appreciate what we do, you've uh, had some fun and discovered some things with the content, then help us continue to do so we very much and deeply appreciate it. So, thanks again. So, we'll see you on some more top 10 lists, some more reviews, and I'll be seeing you on Board Game Breakfast. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being a part of what we do here, and I'll see you on the next one.